welcome to Art2427. Today I'm going to talk to you about this painting that I've done. My name's Andre. I've uh, painted this and uh, I love it. And its title is uh, With Tambourine and Dancing. Now, uh, where that comes from, it comes from a record of an event in the Bible uh, from the book of Exodus. Uh, let me read that to you. And this is, uh, it comes from uh, Exodus chapter 15 and verse 20, where it says this, Then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. So, that's what this painting is all about. It's about Miriam, the prophetess, uh, the sister of Aaron and Moses, uh, going out with all the women, uh, with the tambourines uh, and the dancing. Now, uh, why did they do that? What was the reason for them uh, going out with the tambourines and the dancing? Well, it wasn't just to have a good time. It was a celebration of something. It was a celebration of a great victory that... Uh, God had brought about. And that victory was uh, they had been delivered from the Egyptian army. Now, if you know the uh, the uh, history of Israel, they um, they uh, at that time or just prior to that time, they were a nation of slaves. Uh, they were uh, in Egypt, and their sole purpose was to be slaves of Egypt uh, but God but God but Yahweh the God of Israel he had plans and purposes for them and um, they uh, he spoke to them uh, he sent Moses and Aaron to them and uh, he spoke to them through Moses and Aaron and um, they obeyed his voice and uh, this uh, event happened. Now what, what uh, happened was um, they were uh, in captivity, they were slaves in this nation but God brought them out from Egypt and um, he brought about a great deliverance. Now at that time Egypt was probably uh, the most uh, highly uh, mechanized, had the, the, probably the most highly mechanized and sophisticated army uh, at the time. So uh, when this nation of slaves, the Israelites, left Egypt, the, um, the Egyptians pursued them. Um, and um, God protected them during this uh, exodus. Uh, but then they came to this, uh, this um, Red Sea. Yam Suf it's called in the, in the Bible, but uh, we commonly know it as the Red Sea. Uh, so this is a physical barrier to them. But that didn't stop God's purposes, because what God did, he opened the Red Sea for them, and they all crossed through as uh, on dry ground. And um, uh, the next event that happened was the Egyptian army said, right, let's pursue them, because the Red Sea is open. There is their, their, um, their people that they want back to bring back into slavery. So let's go. So they're... All the commanders, the chariots, the officers, the army, the whole lot of them pursued them right into the Red Sea. And what happened was the Red Sea, after the Israelites had gone through, the Red Sea closed over the uh, Egyptians and it drowned all of their horses and chariots and all their commanders and all their soldiers and destroyed and wiped out their whole army. And that's what is being celebrated by the prophetess Miriam. Uh, and the women, they're dancing with the tambourines, they're dancing and singing in, in celebration. Now, that is uh, what is depicted here in an abstract form, okay? What we have here, represented here, the, in the red, in the deep red, is something that the Bible tells us about. The, the Israelites didn't know about this at the time, but later, through the law of Moses, God gives them 
this revelation uh, in uh, in uh, the book of Leviticus, um, and it's in chapter uh, seventeen, verse um, verse eleven, because God says this: "For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it." for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls for it is the blood that makes atonement by the life so what god is fundamentally telling them here is that their that their life is in the blood life is in the blood so this represents the life of the egyptian army this is their life and what happens to their life it is it is overwhelmed by this blue. This blue is the overwhelming uh, Red Sea coming back upon them and um, it is destroying them. So this brings about this great celebration. Now the thing about uh, about um, this, here, here's, here's, uh, here's these dancers with their tambourines and, and there's more of them dancing here and there's great movement and, and I don't know how they danced but um, the, the, this all of this uh, uh, all of this, uh, these lines, all this mark work here is, is show, showing fluid, rapid movement, uh, whirling and, and a joyous celebration of the dance because, because this victory was entirely brought about by God himself. See, Israel, the Israelites, they didn't have an army. They didn't have an army at all because they were a nation of slaves. So while they were under the Egyptian rule, they didn't have an army. So therefore they couldn't make this uh, stand themselves. They couldn't um, fight the Egyptians. They had no army, they had no uh, weapons, they had no training, they had nothing. They were entirely dependent on God. Um, so, from the very beginning, when God spoke to um, Moses and Aaron, the Moses and, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to the uh, Israelites. They obeyed him. They left. They obeyed him at, um, in the, the the day of Passover, the night of Passover, when the destroying angel went through uh, Egypt. That's when they left. So there was a so there was this obedience of God's word there in Passover, and then when they came to this physical barrier of the of the Red Sea, where could they go? They hadn't. They couldn't turn around and fight. They had no army. They had a lot of men, but they weren't trained. They had no weapons. So what did they do? God told um, Moses, "Stretch out your staff. Stretch out your rod." And the waters departed, and go forward. So they obeyed God and they went forward. So that brought about this great victory, the Egyptians being drowned, this, uh, this whole mechanised army um, who were sought on getting their slaves back, completely destroyed at the command of God and the obedience of the, God's people. And this brought about this joyous celebration. So... Uh, so one of the messages that I get from this is obey. If God speaks, obey. Because you may not have the means, the physical means, to do what you think should be done. You may have a Red Sea, you may have a barrier there, but if God says go forward, stretch out your hand, or words to the, to the, the, to the equivalent, then obey it because your Red Sea will part and God will bring about a victory that you you cannot bring yourself. And then you'll have this experience of rejoicing with the tambourine and the dance. So I hope you, uh, you can see uh, some of that in this uh, painting, in this abstract form. And um, so that's it. So, uh, so until next time, thanks for watching.